Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Ben the Human Plays Vagris the Riven Realms. We met with Tamara at the end of the last episode, and she asked us to set up a meeting with one of the factions to set up coffee plantations here. I'm thinking what we should do is pick the faction we have the highest rep with. <laughs> it actually looks like... Oh, the, the Loader's Guild is not going to be one of the options, because... They're a thieves guild. They don't give a crap about setting up a coffee plantation. I'm guessing it's probably going to be between the Ratharnak Alliance, Venari, and House Aquo. We actually have the rep of House Venari by one more point than House Aquo, which is hilarious. The thing is... It's going to take 258 to get to the next level. The thing is, I would consider picking Ratharnak over the other two because oh i've never actually noticed this that they actually tell you where they have the highest presence huh um the reason i i was thinking i was i would pick ratharnak is i'm trying to get them to level four in order to buy dragon steel to upgrade the the gate even further does anybody have a present oh yeah sure enough house venari has a presence in Kabur. anyway so let, let's see seek out I don't need to seek out Banduil people to transport them around. Um, so it looks like House Darius, Ratharnak, and Aquo. Which... Darius I have the least rep with, so they're probably out. So it's between Ratharnak and Aquo. Honestly, I think I would lean towards Ratharnak just because I, I, I would like it to give me more rep. All right, let us enter the tent of House uh, the Ratharnak. The tent of the Ratharnak Alliance is one of resplendent colors. Sigils depicting an ascending dragon on a bronze green field are numerous throughout its interior, as are the agents that dwell here adorned in bronze or emerald robes. A lone guard appropriately outfitted in dragon seal armor observes you from beyond an arrangement of tables that bear all manner of herbs and plants, presumably laid out for the purposes of ongoing research and sale. Speak with Ratharnak agent in charge here. You have business to discuss. After you explain your business here, the Dragon Guard's standing watch departs for a short time, presumably to inform his superiors of your intentions. A few minutes later, a pale dragonkin woman dressed in bronze robes etched with gold threads steps out with her bodyguard to welcome you. Well met, Bagris. I am Yadrith, in charge of the Alliance's affairs here in Uten Grey. Follow me, please. We can discuss business in my office. Her smile reveals sharp fangs inside a lipless mouth beneath green serpentine eyes. It is not long before you are shown to her abode, a small subsection of the tent with, long, with a long desk that is littered with scrolls and peculiar trinkets of foreign origin. Wasting no time, you get straight to the point. You have come as a representative of Lady Tamara Al-Radan, the Hanjari owner of Uten Grey. You are interested in brokering a deal where she would... Attain a majority share and ownership, the details of which can be finalized after an in-person meeting with the three of you. Yadrith's reaction is, sil is silent. She observes for a time before a wry smile forms on her scaled lips. You'll have to do better than that, I'm afraid, she declares, waiting for your response. You muster all your wits and charm to convince Yadrith to do a deal with Tamara. We succeeded. After you set about convincing Yadrith, you, you engage in a hearty debate, more than an hour passing until you notice some semblance of doubt in her tenor. When you make a crucial point, she is motionless for a time, simply regarding you with distaste, then ostensibly recognizing her intellectual defeat, she sighs. I had rather hoped the lady might fold, but alas, it seems someone has finally taught her the value of leverage. Naturally, we'll need to test the coffee, but otherwise, I agree. Return when everything is ready. You leave the Ratharnak tent after bidding Yadrith farewell. We will meet with Tamara. Maybe? Or do we go back to the tent? Oh yeah, we should uh, check with, with Tamara. I guess I should have asked her if she had any preference to which faction I broker a deal with. <laughs> we have a flame, we, we have a weird flame petaled plant. Well, let's ask this about. 
Tamara ponders your question momentarily before her expression becomes pensive. Despite my misgivings with each, I suppose I do, yes. The Ratharnak Alliance is chief among those I respect. Even their leader is here is somewhat amenable, if a little presumptuous in her temperament. The Alliance is, to me, most shrewd in their business ventures, and I must confess, I, I so admire their willingness to keep with a more voluntary workforce. I know such musings are, how shall we say, sacrilege amongst the more dour of Imperials, but I care not for the sacred chakras of local tradition. It is for that reason that... House Aquo too is among those I would favor more, as they have they at least have the savvy to treat their sa slaves with dignity and respect, befitting a capable servant for the most part. She ponders for a moment for a, further for a moment, choosing her next words deliberately. How Darius, I don't like, she sa states, her eyes sad. I have heard about the circumstances they keep their workers in at Oilfield Duraton, and I will say disgusting, contemptible, vile. There are not enough words to describe the disdain I have for them, but I am no fool. Their military prowess is formidable, and Tartarus knows a girl could do with a little manpower. <laughs> when <laughs> Hot Fuzz reference? When dealing with del delicate business interests, don't we all know? She laughs haughtily before her composure returns. Well, we picked the right one, then. Luck lucky me. Uh, talk to her about this flame petaled plant. You present the flame-petaled plant and begin talking about what you have learned of its origins and uses, at least theoretically. Thoughtfully nodding along, Tamara shares her own experience with the flower. I have been experimenting with it myself, and yes, you are right, it can be used in food or drinks. I have confirmed as such with several bandul. They call it a harutan. A harutan. A harutun. A harutun. And to them it is holy. I just, I don't know whether it adds or takes away from the experience of my regular concoction. A concoction, I might add, that's been tested with some of Tark's most esteemed connoisseurs. You muse that the strange flower might be the difference between her regular exceptional brew and something truly revolutionary. In any case, there is no harm in further experimentation. Convinced, Tamara soon embodies a, gleeful, a gleefulness seldom found in the realms, oft reserved for those who number among the youth. All right then, let's do it, she says full of excitement. If nothing else, you have to admire her enthusiasm. A lengthy prepar preparatory process begins. Through it, Tamara wears an expression born of the utmost concentration. When the brew is finally ready, she dispenses it into a cup and lays it down before you, her eyes probing for your reaction as you bring the steaming beverage to your lips. As you swig heartily on the piping hot brew, your taste buds are awash with a wealth of flavors, and you need a moment just to savor the coffee's unique blend. You taste all kinds. First, there's the hard, bitter mix of flavors more typical of regular Tarkian beans, but soon that flavor is accompanied by a spice that clears your airways, leaving you revitalized. There can be no doubt, this is the finest brew you have ever tasted. It even has a lingering sweet aftertaste. Having observed your borderline cerebral reaction, Tamara promptly pours herself a cup of the stuff, and you see the same feelings you had mirrored on her expressive features. Tem triumphantly, she rises to her full height, declaring a victory of sorts. That's it! The best bloody coffee I've ever brewed! She all <laughs> but bellows before quickly calming herself and continuing. The trick, it seems, is to is using only the most minuscule portion of the plant. I only needed a friend to push me to give it another go, she explains, regarding you with a genuine smile. Enjoying your coffees together, you spend a while conversing. You both agree that the unique brew should be used to sell what it whichever faction you end up choosing on a better deal. Tamara's elation is contagious, and at length you realize that you've been conversing for hours. Making excuses and thanking you for bringing her the curious plant, she offers parting words and good spirits, suggesting that you come and see her again in the near future. We, we gained galvanized. Awesome. Okay, let us, uh, we, oh, we have to go back to her tent. And say we have set up a deal with one of the factions. Have you now, she asks, her tone once haughty and curious. Do tell, who is it? The two of you should prepare for a meeting with the Ratharnak Alliance. Her face lights up. You have? Praise Anubis, she all but whoops. Well then, I shall prepare everything necessary to impress their maj majestic draconic mistress. Dragonkin mistress, then... I must admit, I do rather enjoy the notion of women forging a business deal, you know, defying the current order and all that, she smirks. I have no doubt everything will go swimmingly, especially with you here, hmm? She smiles mischievously until it fades, giving way to curiosity as she re regards you in silence once more. Is there anything else, darling? Oh, she called me darling. <laughs> we've, we've reached that level of friendship.
dating, I don't know. You tell her that you shall return sometime soon, at which point the Rotharnak Alliance will be ready to receive you. Maintaining eye contact, she merely nods before lowering herself into a mock curtsy. I shall, lo I shall look forward to it then, my colleague, she purrs. You bid Tamara farewell for the time being. Do, do we come back here? Uh, no. Enter the, oh, here we go. I think. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. When you are ready to accompany her to the meeting. I'm ready. Let's go. About the flame petal plant? Why did you do the coffee? Your heritage? Do we have to come back later? I'm confused. Maybe if I take my leave and then rest for a day and then come back again. We should buy all the food here. Or the food that we can buy. Oh, crap. Well, let's sell this scrap metal. We don't need that. I could sell the oil, too. Because I did get that for free from, like, that random comitatus we ran into. We have seven days, and we need to get to Shazgabat. That also has a lot of cheap supplies, I believe. Actually, they don't even have that many supplies left now that I look at it. Exchange for news. Oil field. Not what we're looking for. All right, let's, let's have a rest. End of the day. All right, now let's check in with Tamara and see if she would like to go visit the the people. There we go. The stage is set. It is time to do the deal. You shall head to the faction's tent as soon as Tamara is ready. Once you inform Tamara that it is time to depart, you can feel her excitement. Yes, I am ready. I have prepared everything perfectly for this occasion, and now comes the fun. It'll be like it was in Radan with Papa, back before everything turned all sorted, and we'll get the deal I deserve. I can just feel it. Now if you'd be so kind to banish yourself from my little bedroom here, I need a little time to change my dress, and I'll not have you standing here gawking while I do, while I do so, she jokes, mocking you with a sultry gaze. I'll need not more than 15 minutes. Now, off with you. You return to the front of the Hanjari tent, where you waste time and converse with Lady Kailani's uh, ladies, with the ladies Kailani assistant nearby. <laughs> I thought that was her name. Discussing all manner of topics, it is not until a nearly an hour later that Tamara calls you back into her chamber. When you enter, you set your eyes upon the curvaceous Hanjari royal, who now wears a long charcoal dress that bears the elegant markings of Anubis and is decidedly conservative. Her flowing dark hair has been straightened and gleams with a near pristine sheen. Sitting beneath an elegant silk hood, as her eyes meet yours, she manages an innocent smile. Well, how do I look? Make a neutral compliment! Or comment, or compliment her however you choose. Let's give her a compliment. <laughs> Though it is only momentary, you catch a measure of satisfaction in her eyes. Perhaps even a blush. You swear she is being coy on purpose. Or is she? Given her te general temperament, it is difficult to tell. Let's be off, Vagris. You lead the way. You nod and you set the pace as she follows you outside. Soon you have enough. You soon enough. You have left the Hanjari tent and are outside the encampment. You lead the way as Tamara brings up the rear. As you make your way to the meeting's location, she moves up beside you, clearing her throat to get your attention. Listen, Vagris, I hardly, I'm hardly the best negotiator, as my past record might suggest. Do you mind taking the lead? She asks, a hint of hesitancy in her voice. You tell her that you have no qualms about doing so. You set up the meeting, and you will see it through to the end, come what may. Thank you, Vagris. Truly, I cannot have done this without you. Now, enough about my shortcomings, she declares. Let's focus on the task at hand. You can only agree. The coming meeting will have a profound impact on you both. You walk together towards the si across the sandy ground of the surrounding encampment until you finally reach your destination. When you arrive at the Ratharnak tent, you are attended to forthwith. Imposing dragon guard warriors soon usher you through a grand chamber with multiple seating arrangements. You are joined by Yadrith, the pale reptilian dragonkin leader of the alliance's local contingent. She has brought company too. A short procession of merchants and other and another of Yadrith's kin joins you while a robed sorcerer brings up the rear, bearing the Rotharnak colors. Yadrith's kin joins you. 
Oh, whoops. <laughs> Minutes pass as everyone is seated. You take the floor, introducing Lady Tamara Al-Radan, your friend and confidant, the leader of the Hanjari here. Tamara curtsies and begins making preparations after laying out the materials that she needs. Before long, she has pulled back the hood of her ashen-colored dress and is preparing the coffee under the watchful gaze of Yadra's court. She moves with finesse now, clearing in her element, clearly in her element. In no more than 15 minutes, the brews are ready and Tamara begins doling them out to Yadrith and her associates. The moment of truth is upon you both. Yadrith is the first to take a sip, though her sorceress colleague is not far behind. The other merchants of the Alliance partake too, but it is Yadrith's serpentine eyes that glimmer as she is the first to speak. Upon Herkina, Herkinrath, I swear it, this brew is fit for the dragon lords themselves. What on earth did you use in it, dear girl? Indeed, the sorceress co companion intones. What did you use? An expression torn between ecstasy and skepticism covers her scaled draconic features. She hovers her right hand over the mug in a bid to find something magical, but there is nothing. Tamara takes the opportunity to pounce. Oh, Yadrith, did you call me girl? Do you think I seek to trick you and your esteemed colleagues? The Vagris and I have concocted a mixture that I that will see Imperials flock in their dozens to this searing oasis, and you, yes you, will need to offer me more than a majority share, I'm afraid. You see Tamara's eyes blaze with triumph, and you recognize her gambit. She is pushing her advantage, so you follow suit, taking the floor to bolster her efforts. The Ratharnak are powerless to resist. They understand the value of Tamara's Arut Aharutan brew, and they would be fools to reject her offer, no matter how ruthless they really are. From here, you press your advantage to its natural conclusion, finalizing the deal. The atmosphere in the room is electric, and at length, you and Tamara work together to get everything written up and appropriately documented. It's time to close the deal. You work together to finalize the deal. Papers are drawn up and documents are signed. Requirements, plans, and materials are needed and materials needed are discussed at length, as are the details of Tamara's role as the key decision maker in the operation. Your role will be to bring those resources to the settlement to help prepare for the forthcoming construction. As for the facilities and buildings themselves, you and Tamara push the idea of a two-storied villa or hall that serves as the headquarters at Utengray for both parties. When the bureaucratic affair comes to a close, there is some measure of gratitude among all your associates. Everyone recognizes the potential that this business venture has. With everything accounted for, you bid Yadrith and her cadre of sorcerers and merchants farewell, leaving the Ratharnak tent. This is like the most amicable thing that's happened to me in Vagris the Riven Realms. We became friends with a coffee merchant, uh, maybe more, and now we've like had a, a business deal where everyone is happy. <laughs> it's, it's like the most normal interaction I've had with anybody. <laughs> when you clear... When you are clear of the Ratharnak tent, Tamara turns to you, a wide rapturous smile on her face, she then leaps forward and hugs you. The embrace lingers and you are awash with her smell, the scented perfu perfume she wears, her thick luscious hair, and her body all hold fast. And then realizing her folly, she pulls back apologizing. Sorry, I'm, I'm just so happy, Vagris, I couldn't contain myself. You see a pregnant tear at the side of her eye and understand just how much this means to her. She reacts quickly, batting it away with a bejeweled hand and then corrects herself. I took her down. Did you see it? She and her sorceress buddy. They were oh so hoity-toity when we first met. And then as soon as they tasted my brew, no, our brew, they completely lost it. She even swore upon her dragon, bronze dragon. What was the name? Heracurden Wrath? She ponders a moment, dismissing the thought. No matter, I've never felt such a rush in my life. Upon Anubis in my family's name, I swear it, she almost shouts, taking a breath to continue. Now, will you join me for a celebratory drink? I'm sure you would agree that this is an occasion that needs celebrating, hmm? You concur with Tamara, and soon you are back in her abode, drinking from a bottle of red wine that she had been, apparently been saving from Radon. Its taste is as rich as the conversation that flows between you and the lady, Event until eventually you say your mutual goodbyes, content with the prospects of the future. You return to the comitatus, mildly inebriated as the day comes to a close. Yes! we. I was hoping we'd get bonus with Ratharnak. Cool. Okay, now they're, we've unlocked the fledgling site. Construction of Lady Tamara's coffee house is already underway. Standing at its perimeter, you allow your gaze to explore the burgeoning construction site. Tamara's Hanjari overseers observe operations alongside her allies' formidable contingent, and you watch while a swath of craftsmen, workers, and other laborers can be seen plying their trade, toiling tirelessly to move the project along. Marble slabs are hauled around, chiseled, hammered, and shaped. The chaos of it all fills the air with the drone of tools hard at work. 
Resolving to explore with your eyes peeled, you converse with a number of personnel here, and it soon becomes evident that the structure is that is intended to be built will be one of majesty. Some even claim that it will be a marvel, a hall with robust defensive capabilities and finery inside its confines, a home fit for the lady by all accounts. With all the bloviation about what this fledgling site will be, you cannot help but remember that it is one person who made it all possible. You! <laughs> I thought they were going to say it was Tamara. I think it's a two-person job, because without her, there's no way I would have been here in the first place. That and the fact that it is worked to be done bears remembering. After all, your role in the operation is not yet concluded. Take leave of the construction site. Oh! Oh! Holy crap! This is even bi a bigger project than than fixing Hacktarast up here. We need 25 stacks of marble, 10 stacks of timber. Oh, a maximum. Interesting. Oh, 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 oh. 200 delivered resources. Each delivered item from below raises the delivered resources. Ah. Oh, we can... Haha! <laughs> weird. You can bring carpets and lamps and workers. Huh. Interesting. So a stack of timber, I believe, is eight. And I think a stack of marble is also eight. So you technically could get there with marble alone, but marble is harder to procure than timber because timber we could get from um, the lumber camp down here. So you could get a total of 80 timber, which is almost halfway. Workers you could get a crap ton of. And then prized carpets. I think, well, we can there's the carpet shop. And then we have crystal lamps, but I think we only have one of those. You wouldn't happen to have crystal lamps hanging out here, would you? You don't. <laughs> that, I thought I'd ask, just in case. All right, so if we want to turn stuff in, maybe the curious encampment at the Ritharnak tent? Business? Nope. Maybe at Tamara's tent. Uh, we've already talked about this. Ah, ask Tamara about what she needs for the construction of the hall. Tamara curls her fingers around a stray lock of hair, lost in thought for a moment. Then clearly having remembered the details, she beams a, ha a half serious, half playful expression on her features. For starters, we're going to need a huge swath of marble and plenty of timber, she announces, pulling her finger loose of her thick duskin locks. Oh, and we'll need carpets too. My lounge will be a place of ostentation, of luxury and relaxation, lavish pillows and warm crystal lamps. Most importantly, she muses cheekily, a place for business, a home and hearth for visitors all around the bronze desert, she proclaims, a hint of moxing, mocking pretentiousness in her tone now. Yes, and workers, do bring me a lot of them. We will need them both for the construction and as my staff at the lounge. You ask Tamara to specify what kind of workers she is looking for. She must choose the ideal path for her and her business partners. No slaves. Other than that, I don't really mind honestly naturally you being my associate she smirks you'll be getting a, a finder's fee don't worry about the goods either with our partners footing the bill i'll always be good for the coin she pauses for a moment eyeing you intently you notice a hint of a blush we're going to create something special vagris i can hardly wait talk about something else okay so we have brought resources or workers okay so we have to have them in parcels of 10 uh and then we have stacks of of wood, stacks of lumber. Oh, I didn't realize this lumber was a stack of 10. Okay, so we could get half of the the materials with lumber. We don't have a prized carpet and we don't have any crystal lamps. Oh, crystal lamps are not the great lamps that I have. There's something else. Interesting. Okay, well we don't we don't have anything. Um I wonder, are there enough workers here? There's two workers? Okay, we'll have to like get a contingent of workers from Cobber or something like that. But for now, I guess we'll uh, we'll head out. And we do have to go to Shazgabat. We've been hanging out at Utengrei for a while, so we might be a little late at this point. Hopefully not. Let us rest. Well, that was cool. That's like the most like lore I've I've achieved in like one episode. I feel like maybe not not uh, after like like the golden theory was a lot of lore all at once as well. Um, but that was fun. I, I'm excited to get that set up. That seems actually a lot easier than 
um, Hacterast because it's not stacks, it's just like a, a an amount of material needed. Alright, turn our stuff in. We got some rep. Good job, us. And these things need to go to Kaber. Do you guys have anything going to Kaber or Wazir High, Aharkada, or any of the oil fields, honestly? Except for Duraton. Okay, we got some for something for Renaris. And... You want me to go back to Utengray? You fools! I'm going the other way! And Phlegatus Bridge. Not what I'm looking for. Renaris is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're already going to Renaris, so let's go there as well. How's our food looking? Let's sort this inventory. It's a mess! It's a mess, I say! Honestly, we should just sell the oil. I'm just, like, carting it around for no reason. Let's get some more supplies. How many days to... If we just go to Oilfield Renaris? Because there's not really a, re a reason to go to either of these. I guess it depends on if we fill up our inventory or not. Five to seven days. We have four days right now. All right, seven days. And was that the only thing? I could take this Stygius Lumber Camp because I do plan on going down there anyway. So why not? And then we'll get the last stack. Even though it's a little expensive, it should be fine. All right, let's head out. And then we're going to kind of go southeast-ish. Or southwest-ish. More west than south, I guess. There we go. Hmm. I think we want to go up. Because it looks like it's a little more direct route down. It's just a guess, though. You guys should put some roads out here so I know where the hell I'm going. <laughs> Okay, I guess we do have to go a little further south than I thought we might. Let's go send our dudes out into the ocean. Into the ocean? Into the into the desert. I think I was thinking oasis. We're not in an I guess you could say an ocean of sand if you were being poetic. I'm excited to start our, our Starbucks Desert Edition. Um, that'll be interesting. I, I haven't I haven't ever achieved like any kind of like permanent establishment like in this game, so it's kind of neat from that perspective. I know that like my long term goal as a Vagris is to s set up like my my settlement or whatever. I've heard mixed things about that, so I've just kind of been ignoring that for now all right so now we're heading to Kaber. so we'll take anything Kaber related holy god you want me to free up eight inventory space is this this stuff has to be like let's see chitin and ivory okay chitin ivory bone sure chitin bone pottery and highs okay i just wanted to make sure i wasn't like Hauling stuff that wasn't actually for delivery. We have s four spare spots. Three days worth of food. And it'll take us four to six days to get there. But the oil field Venari is in the... Er, not in the way, but like on the way. Do you have any more stuff for Kaber that's like smaller <laughs> in nature? Or Stygius Lumber Camp or Onyx Outpost, honestly. That one's seven. You guys want me to carry so much stuff. It's ridiculous. Alright. Well, we don't have the space, so we might as well ditch a beast of burden then. And then get a little bit more supplies, just to be on the safe side. And then we will have to hit Oilfield Venari on the way. We can't just run to Kaber. But honestly, like, it's harder to get to Kaber directly without going through Oilfield Venari anyway. Uh, we'll rest here today. Passengers going to Onyx Outpost. Sure. Oh, we don't have the the the, the guards. <laughs> Actually, we're kind of low on guards, and we have been for a while. So I should have uh, I should have hired guards a long time ago. 
get two more horses. And then, uh, yeah, that should be fine. I guess we'll get the last stack of food here, just to be safe. Oh, and we have to rest. Rest for the day. And then on we go. We'll get to Kabur at the end of the episode today, and then and that'll be where we we pause the episode. And by the end of all this, I feel we will we'll definitely have uh, recharged our Australid because I, I plan on going down to Stygius Lumber Camp, filling up with ten stacks of lumber, and then delivering that to um, Hoot and Gray. Let's see. I don't think there's going to be anything here. Mirage? Really? Um, I guess you have a Stygius Lumber Camp thing. We could pick up our... <laughs> the Beast of Burden we left behind. I could also unmount a bunch of my guys. And there we go. Let's grab it. We have two days. Honestly, let's unmount even more. It's only a problem if we get ambushed, which could happen, but... You know, let's be brave. Or foolish. Ta-da! Alright. Six movement still. Let's get... The rest of these fighters. And the horses. Cool. Ten and ten. Why not? And we have plenty of horses to be mounting even more fighters once we've sorted our life out. Uh, let's leave the, the uh, last oil field here. Oh, I was like, I, I invited this on myself by... By, uh... What on earth? Um, it, saying I was going to get ambushed. Irifan smiles at you this day when the Komitata stumbles upon an interesting find. The endless yellow sand dunes suddenly give way to an arid basin in it, which a small cactus forest is growing under the scorching sun. You could stay for a few hours and harvest the cacti for supplies and water if you wished. We might as well because we don't have any more movement. I was going to say, it takes all of our movement. The Komitata settles into the basement and ba the basement, the basin, and the crew gets to it right away. It is hard, exhausting work under the merciless sun, but the yield should make up for the trouble. You oversee the harvesting until its completion. This I was gonna say. I wonder if we're go not gonna have any space for it. I don't think we do. Oh, we got some medical supplies though, so that's something. All right, on to cover. Please don't ambush me. Irifan smiles upon us this day. And we've done it. Hooray! Approach the guards. Nothing to hide. We are a friend of the Hanjari. And in we go. And the mercenaries got dropped off. Fantastic news. Alright, if you guys enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you want to see more of Agris, the Riven Realms, or the other videos I have going on on the channel, subscribe to the channel. That also helps me out a lot. But until next time, everybody, I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody!